Welcome to the MH2801 video lecture on the orthogonality of cosine 2 pi nt over t. Consider the integral from 0 to t of cosine 2 pi mt divided by t times cosine 2 pi nt over t dt. Now, in order to evaluate this integral, we need to convert the product of cosines into a sum of cosines. To do that, we need to make use of the multiple angle formula, that is, cosine a plus b is equals to cosine a, cosine b, minus sine a, sine b, and also cosine a minus b, which is equals to cosine a, cosine b, plus sine a sine b so if we add these two up we will find that cosine a plus b plus cosine a minus b will give us 2 cosine a cosine b so if we identify for a if we identify a to be 2 pi mt over t and b to be 2 pi nt over t then a plus b will be 2 pi m plus nt over capital T and a minus b will be 2 pi m minus nt over capital T and then our integral can then be converted from a product of cosines into a sum of sines, a sum of cosines, uh, as so as such. So one half of uh, cosine two pi m plus n t divided by capital T plus one half cosine two pi m minus n t divided by capital T dt. So let me put the integral in a square bracket. Uh, to highlight the fact that it is a sum of two terms, each of which is a simple cosine. But because it's a simple cosine, we know how to evaluate it. Okay, integr after integrating, we get sine 2 pi m plus n t over capital T, but also divided by, because if we differentiate sine 2 pi m plus n t, divided by capital T, we will have to bring down the factor 2 pi m plus n divided by capital T. So we divide it throughout now so that uh, after differentiation, it will give us back indeed just cosine 2 pi n, m plus n t over capital T. So let's write down that factor that we will pick up for integrating the cosine 2 pi m plus n t uh, over capital T. And then, of course, there will be the other term, which is sine 2 pi m minus n t divided by capital T, again divided by 2 pi m minus n divided by capital T. And this is to be evaluated at upper limit of capital T. So this is capital T, not little t, capital T. Okay, evaluated at limit capital T, uh, not pi, but t and also 0. Now, let's uh, consider what happens when we substitute capital T in here. Now, if we see, if we check that, if we substitute capital T in here, so let me just draw a circle here, and then point, point it to substituting to capital T, you find that this becomes capital T divided by capital T, so this whole thing becomes a integer multiple of 2 pi. Now, when you take the sign of an integer multiple of 2 pi, okay, it doesn't matter what m plus n is, uh, the, this sign is going to be 0. So, for the first term in, the, integ uh, in uh, the integral, this will be 0. And the same thing happens here as well. So, if we substitute capital T into the sign, the, the second term, of the sum sine 2 pi m minus n t over capital T again this will become 0 so the entire upper limit evaluates to 0 
Now what about the lower limit? The lower limit is zero. So if we substitute it into capital T here, we will be taking the sine of zero. Now the sine of zero is of course zero. And if we do it the same thing here, it will again be zero. So the lower limit is also zero. And therefore the whole integral becomes zero. Okay, so that is when m is not equals to n. Now what happens when m is equals to n? When m is equals to n, then in, instead of writing it as a product of two different cosines, we must write this as integral from 0 to t of cosine square 2 pi n t over capital T dt. Now to evaluate this integral, uh, we again need to convert cosine square into a single cosine. And to do that, we need the double angle formula, which tells us that cosine 2a is equals to, okay, what is it equals to? It is equals to, of course, cosine square a minus sine square a, which is the, the multiple angle formula that we, we had seen earlier on. And uh, I, can, I can simplify this a little bit further because this is cosine square. I want cosine square, but I do not want sine square. Of course, I can make use of the trigonometric identity, cos square plus sine square equals to 1, to write this as cos square A minus of 1 minus cos square A, which then gives us 2 cos square A minus 1. Okay, now... Uh, I'm interested to write cosine square in terms of cosine 2a. So I'll make cosine square the subject. So I have cosine square a, okay? And then this will be 1 half, 1 plus cosine 2a. So what do we identify for uh, a? Well, we identify for a 2 pi n t over capital T. And therefore, the integral becomes... The integral from 0 to t of 1 half 1 plus cosine. Now this is 2a. a is 2 pi nt over t. So 2a will be cosine 4 pi nt over capital T and then integrate. So okay, so this is a this is just 1. So if we integrate 1, uh, actually we integrate 1 half, we will just get t over 2, okay, from 0 to t. And then the next term will be uh, 1 half okay, sine of 4 pi n t over capital T divided by 4 pi n over capital T uh, evaluated at capital T and also 0. Now let's see what happens when we substitute the upper limit into the the integral the, that we have evaluated and see that if little t becomes capital T, we will end up with the sine of 4 pi n, which is an integer multiple of 2, at 2 pi, and therefore the upper limit evaluates to 0. And now, if we in substitute uh, 0 into little t, then we will be taking the sine of 0, which will again be 0. So the lower limit is also 0, and therefore this whole term, this whole second term, uh, evaluates to 0, but of course the first term is non-zero, and we end up with t over 2. Okay, so if we put them, put uh, combine the two results, we can write this as the integral from 0 to t cosine 2 pi mt over capital T cosine 2 pi nt over capital T dt. We can write this as t over 2 delta mn, where delta mn is the chronicle delta. Okay, and the chronicle delta is equals to 1 uh, when m is equals to n and equals to 0 uh, otherwise. Okay, now, based on this formula here, this relation between the uh, integral of the product between cosine 2 pi mt and cosine 2 pi nt over t, uh, we, def we therefore conclude that the, the two cosines, they, the, or this set, the set of cosines 2 pi nt over t form an orthogonal set. 
If m is not equal to n, they, these two functions are orthogonal within zero to time interval zero to t. If they are the same, of course, they uh, integrate to uh, t over two. So this is the orthogonality relation. Orthogonality relation that we wanted to show, and of course, this t over two is not one. So therefore, the Cosine 2 pi nt is not normalized within this time interval, but that's all we need, that they are orthogonal uh, in order to make in order to use this result in the uh, derivation of the Fourier series coefficients, which we will do in a later video segment.